What's up everybody? So right now we're about to do uh, another rehab session uh, with yet another professional. This one I'm very excited for. Uh, Dr. Peter Ulbu, uh, who is an um, orthopedic surgeon or studying to be a, studying to be an orthopedic surgeon, also ex chiropractor or current chiropractor. He's going to be check. He's uh, recently checked out my left shoulder. Uh, we did some tests, found out that uh, we believe there's uh, tendonitis in um, the proximal end of my long head bicep and possibly supraspinatus. So that's really cool to know. I'm just being armed with more information. Now I'm coming to him curious about uh, how to fix up my hamstring because I have some tendonitis or something going on, as you guys, many of you know, in my upper hamstring. All right. You're okay with being filmed, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. Super. Uh, no problem. This looks like a porn <laughs> video. Totally. Just threw that out there. <laughs> didn't even ask. Uh, no problem. All right. But then explain how is it, what is your okay. feel here with the hamstring? So I've noticed in a deadlift, for example, at least light enough. I'll go heavy, the pain is there no matter what. <laughs> but say I'm working 500 pounds. I have worked my abduction so much that my, you know, my feet tend to, is it supinate? Yeah, supinate. Mm. So I've, um, during a deadlift, I'll push it out, out, out. And I have most of my pressure on the outside of my foot. Mm. And I feel that pain right up here. All right. Um, I notice though, if I really jam my big toes down and focus on uh, adducting mm. uh, really hard oh. uh, and squeezing my butt cheeks and adducting as hard as I can, jamming my big toe on the ground, the pain just about goes away completely. Oh yeah? And if I'm doing single leg RDLs, like this side, I feel very comfortable with. It glides, no problem. When I go here, it's like, I already feel a little pain, like one out of 10. And uh, it's just, I can hardly even stabilize. No. Oh. <clears throat> so that's- Yeah, and that hurt, right? As I was coming up here, that hurt. If you just stand on one leg here, mm -hmm. we're gonna try to see what you do. It's a, like the speed runner drill. Okay. So you're gonna go up here, lift up uh, your right knee, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna try to bend down on uh, the left knee, same time as you move your body forward, and you push your right leg backwards. So you're gonna go like uh, uh, speed uh, when you do speed skating, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but you don't have to. You just bring it back up, gradually here. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you bend your knee when you're going down. So you bend it like 10, 15 degrees. Like this. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. Then you come up. Extend. All right. Try to do it just two, three uh, reps here. That one. Now, right now, we're just assessing how is the stability on the left side. And we're going to do the right side. So we're going to compare how it is. Now we're going to do it on the right side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how that works out. You can feel like one out of 10 my somewhere in there. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I assume it's hamstring. You can see like that, that keeps happening. It keeps flaring out. Yeah. You can see that. Mm. In pain? Yeah. Try to do it just uh, two, three times here. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Do you feel the difference between the sides? For sure. Mm. Okay. If you lay your head up here and uh, your legs down this way, you're back. On my back. Mm. We're gonna try, uh, I'll lift up the right side first. And we might need to change it around so we can do the other side after. I, I see what right. Completely relaxed. Mm -hmm. Do that, there's a very slight impingement here, but uh, it just goes away. So one, we might I wanna make sure here is that there's no actual impingement within the joint. Okay. Because you can have a impingement inside the joint with the with the caps, but there's no sign of that. Okay. So, so that's very good because that's a different issue and that's a bigger issue. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, I bring the leg here. This one, no, feels all right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we'll bring it up here, and I'm gonna push it across here. You Just a good stretch. But no, you don't feel that pain coming in Nothing there. Nothing at all. All right, all right. I'm gonna push in here. Everything's fine. No big zone is there. Mm -hmm. right. And when I come up here. Nothing. Feels all right. Mm -hmm. 
And then I'm gonna come down and the source muscle right here. It tickles. <laughs> so hard to relax. What muscle are you uh, pressing down? And that's the iliosaurus. So it's the big uh, hip flexor right here. It's coming down from the side of the spine, and then it attaches on the inside of the of the upper part of the femur. So the ortho, orthopedic here. Uh, chiropractor, do you believe in like hammering your bones like Dr. Hot uh, Hightower? Um, he was a hammer. <laughs> and there's a lot of, you know, some of the old Indian doctors, they do that as well. It's like, you can do that. They do it actually with shockwave as well. Hmm. So it can be good for certain conditions. So what we see here is the slight tightness up around the source muscle here. Tightness? In the yeah, in the source. You'll probably feel a bit more tired on the right side here compared to when I'm pushing Ooh. down the left. Not a lot, but just a bit. Yeah. When we look around the it muscle, the flight. <laughs> it could be. It's so a it's shortening. Right? Yeah, it's a bit short here. Yeah. Uh, when we look up at the actual muscles around the hip, yeah. they look quite well. We can see that there's a stability issue here mm -hmm. when when you're going down. Yeah. When we're testing. You see there's a difference between the two sides. It's quite clear yeah. that the stability for your knee is just when you're up here on your left, it's, it's going really well. Yeah. But when you come on your right, see it starts to it's, it's a, be yeah. very shaky. Very right, true. And, uh, and that will cause problems down the foot here. Mm -hmm. Then it will change the pressure while, where you're applying the pressure here that you're going to go out on the outside of the foot. You start to supinate. And it will also give you a lot of issues up here because yeah. you have to tighten up a lot to really keep that knee stable. Very true. Um, we can look at the hamstring here, see if there's any sign of a tendinitis up where it attaches here. Okay. It attaches deep in here. Mm. Um, but we're gonna look at it, see if there's anything in there. And we're gonna look at the pelvis as well, see how the movement is within the pelvis okay. and the sacral ligament joints. Great. If there's anything in there. Because sometimes that could be an issue as well. Can you feel a difference here? Between the right and left side? Like, I don't feel as ticklish on the side. <laughs> yeah, I can't really say I do. No. I feel a slight difference. Uh, okay. It's a bit tighter, it's not a lot. You don't have a big issue with that. Tighter on the, on, the, side. On the right side. Yeah. How long have you been a doctor? I became a chiropractor in uh, 2003, then I became a medical doctor in 2012. Um, what? Okay, go on. And then I'm finishing my PhD here within the next, I'm gonna defend the thesis in two months. What's your thesis? It's on uh, modic changes, actually. And modic changes are inflammatory end plate changes, uh, which is something that a lot of people with back pain, they have these changes here around 20, 30, 40%. So it's it's a big issue. Something that somebody looked at, whether they should have antibiotics and, yeah. um, oh. and how you should treat them surgically. Mm. Um, so that's yeah. a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, come on your stomach here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try, really try to relax here because I'm gonna try to go in and, and hit that uh, uh, tuba where it attaches. And I'm gonna Just try- Just start to slow and shallow. All right. <laughs> And we see how it feels here. Now we do uh, your left side here first. Mm -hmm. How does it feel when I'm just uh, pushing in against the bone here? That's where the the hamstring muscles attaches. Gotcha. Uh, the pain. Sore? No, nothing. The pain on the right side is let's see, uh, more medial mm -hmm. and slightly more distal than that. So we're All talking right. about a centimeter more inwards and downwards. All right. So nothing here. Nothing there. On the left side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you relax here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I feel the pain again, it's more on the inside and slightly down more. All right. Absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. 
It just makes me wonder if it's just a tracking issue. I try to... Uh, you'll try to just keep the, uh, the foot in this position here. Okay. A lower leg. And I'm going to push down a bit here. Good. All right. You keep the lower leg here. Nothing. Everything feels good. And you keep it here. I'm going to do a small push on it. You keep it here. And doesn't give you any pain at all. Zero. Yeah. What are you looking for? You're trying to see if there's a tendinitis here within either the biceps femoris here, or if you have it on the semitendinosus and semimembranosus coming in on the medial side here. You're gonna have uh, pain when I'm doing the eccentric movement here. Ooh. So for most tendinitis, they don't like getting stretched out when they're being tight. So if you get that eccentric movement in there uh, during a contraction of the muscle, it will give you a lot of pain. So what that indicates is that there's not a big tendinitis thing going on right here. Yeah. That's not the issue here. Interesting. Mm. Okay. So you try to pull up here, you pull um, backwards. Yes. And you hold it again. Mm -hmm. And again, there's mm -hmm. nothing really. No, nothing. No. But on my left side, years ago, I had ischial bursitis that was pretty persistent. So maybe I feel like a 0 0.5 mm. out of 10, like right in the bursa. But, but that was an old issue. Old issue, yeah. yeah. It's just almost non existent. Oh. That looks good. Yeah. All right, you try to take your arms down along the side here. Um, and now you're just going to feel the joints here. This is the upper part of the sacral yoga joints. Here we have the right side, here we have the left side. I'm pushing down here. No, good. Popped. Is there any pain when I'm coming in? No. No. Feel a difference between me pushing down on the left side compared yeah, to the right? Definitely. Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel that as well. Okay. It feels like my left side is tighter, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. It's actually tightening up on the right side. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'm wrong. And here? Mm -hmm. So? No, I'm nothing? No. Okay. Then you come in your back again. <laughs> it's sort of, This is one of those mysterious pains that I rarely feel until it's activated in just the right positioning or whatever. No. Mm -hmm. You try to bring your legs inwards. So you have to, uh, you try to bring your... So abs? Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So bring your angles together. Right. Feel any difference between the sides there? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I Was that the right one? Lift it up. Uh, just uh, 10 centimeters here. Yeah. And then you try to bring it inwards here yeah, while you keep it up. Okay, yes, right. you bring it inwards. You adduct. Yeah. And then you adduct it. You bring it outwards. Got it. Good. And you relax. Okay, we do the same here on the left side. Adduct. Adduct. Okay, and then you add up. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you feel a difference? Hard to say, mm -hmm. because it's, this knee has been bothering me for a couple of years now, so I, I feel like a little bit here. All right. But it's like one out of ten. All right. See, look at uh, his hips here. Look at the, when you're looking down at his hips here, see if they're moving. We'll do it one more time so you can see it as well. <clears throat> you just do the same thing. We'll bring it in first. In. Mm -hmm. And then you bring it out. Wait, you, so how, you saw how much it tightens up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, this, this side, do, for sure. Then we do this one. You bring it in. Like it. Then you bring it out. Good. 
Can you see the difference? You can see how it raises up. Yeah, this one raises up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. What, what raises it? Yeah, so you see, when you're trying to do it here, yeah. on your left side here, you're really compensating a lot. You're really tightening up a lot here. Oh, interesting. Like yeah. yeah. So. I, okay, I've done that consciously for a while. Like this. Someone, I heard from a physical therapist that my left core was weak. Mm. So I think whenever I do motions, like dead or the squat, anything, mm. I focus on squeezing my left core mm. tighter than the right. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is if, if you're putting weight on it, yeah. and then, you're getting just a slight misalignment as you're doing that. Yeah. If you're getting a slight rotation here within the pelvis, mm. that, you know, it yeah. goes out. That, that's not good once there's weight on it. It's yeah. great if you're just doing, you know, stability work, if you're doing a, a yeah. five kilo dumbbell. But if you have, a, if you're carrying a lot of weight and mm. then there's a difference in the way you tighten up, yeah. then, uh, then it's an issue here. Because you see this, the pattern here, it doesn't, I looked a bit out. <laughs> wow, okay. All right. But just look at the knee as well here. Yeah. And because we're going to see if there's any sign of a, when you have the muscles coming down on the inside, the medial side of your thigh, mm -hmm. you have the two big muscles coming down from the hamstrings here, uh, semitendinosus um, and the semimembranous muscles. They go down here. And then you have the adductors coming in here as well. Mm. Right where they attach, you see. This is what we use when we, um, go in and we need a graft for the ACL. Oh. You take these muscles, you make a small incision here, and you go up and you cut off the muscle and you use that as a graft for the ACL. Oh. But these muscles here, they are, they can give you some irritation down here. Yeah. So you're just gonna see if there's any sign of irritation because that could explain as well why, you know, it's, it's a bit wobbly here. Gotcha. <laughs> and uh, let's see, break the neck. Well, most of, I think my right glute is stronger and bigger than my left one. Yeah. So that causes compensations. And also, it's another reason why I focus on firing my left side harder. Yeah. Because if I don't, yeah. I mean, I've, I've made videos where, like you know, I was saying, I brace my left side, so I just fire my left side. If I don't, you'll see my whole body shift. To right. shifting, yeah. Like I shift to my right leg yeah. if I don't focus on really tensing my left side. All right. I'm gonna just persist you here. You try to bring that heel over towards your knee. That's Wait, are you still doing assessments or adjustments? Uh, it's an assessment. Keep, keep back to it. Yeah, just yeah. hold it there. Yeah. Is it pain when I come down here? Oh. Nothing, no. Interesting. So right as I started that activation, I felt it all the way up in there. You feel it all the way up? Yeah. All right. It went away, right away after a split second, but. Okay. And relax here. Yeah, yeah so. That was fine. I, just, I was curious if I would feel it there. Ah. It's very slightly I did. Yeah. Okay. If you bring up your knees first, so you flex them like uh, 90 degrees, and, right and, uh, and you bring them up so they're straight upwards. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then you push your knees together. Relax. Yeah, and one more time, push together. Definitely feel different. Yeah. And do you feel, does it give you any of that pain? It's just like 0.5 out of 10. All right. Mm -hmm. It's there okay. though. You straighten this one out. Mm -hmm. Is there any pain when I... No pain, here? just like a regular... I want to come down here. Mm -hmm. I'll just situate that. You get any pain here? No. No. I can feel the difference. There's definitely a difference. Yeah. I just don't know what to <laughs> say. There's not, there's not a big issue here. Yeah. And that's a bit like the same as what's going on with the shoulder. You're yeah. very athletic. You're extremely athletic. Mm. And you don't have a big issue. It's yeah. not a big problem. That's right. Fight but, record. Yeah. But it's, but it's one of these problems. Well, it's yeah. been going on for like a year. Yeah. So that's the thing and I want to figure it out so it doesn't get worse. It's the same with the shoulder thing here that it's, if you weren't as conscious as you are about this yeah. area and if you weren't as good as you are really doing your work, tightening it up, being careful that it doesn't aggravate, get out of control. Yeah. It would have been an issue a long time ago. The main thing that I see here we we'll looked at the muscles here. We saw if there's any sign of tendinitis, if there's any sign of a tear, any sign of a bursitis or irritation yeah. there. But there's nothing when I come in on the muscles. Yeah. The whole hamstring group, 
it's working fine. There's no, there's no sign of any big thing going on inside. No tendinitis. The same for the adductor group here. It's looking good. There's a slight difference between uh, the hip flexors, source muscles here. Okay. That it's a little bit more tight when you come down on your right side here. That's so fascinating. Okay. So, and then there's the stability thing that we see here. When you're up on your one knee, you're doing the uh, speed uh, skate exercises. Yeah. Here. We definitely see a difference there. Definitely. And a so, huge difference if I do the, the Superman or whatever. The, yeah. Cool. yeah, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you how to do that exercise so you okay. get that one doing because what we need is we need that your glute medius so you have to treat glutes yeah but the medium one that's extremely important for the stability of the knee yeah if that one is not firing properly if that the one is not working properly it doesn't mean you're not strong interesting but yeah. it just means that if it's not firing properly and that can mm -hmm. be for a lot of reasons, yeah. you're gonna feel like I have a theory. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it out. Mm -hmm. It's because, like I said in the past, my right side was so much more dominant, so it shifted my right. Yeah. But over the last three years, I've been really focusing on tensing at my left, yeah. getting the activation, getting my left to shift to the left. And I might have done it a little too much, so my left just activates better. Even yeah. It's not as strong. I have more connection now with my left side. Yeah. But it could it could definitely be that. You'll see a lot of people which have actually strong glutes. Yeah. They'll have, you know, a glute maximum that's strong. They've done a lot of squats. Yeah. They'll, they'll have a great strength. If you just go in, you measure the strength. But if their glute medium is not firing well, mm. you'll see that there's a stability issue and eventually it can cause them to it can cause them to lose their tracking during the squat. Yeah. That they will start to have flares with their knees. Which and, I think I'm going through, yeah. And as soon as you start to you know, you go into a, a, a load position here and you start mm -hmm. to flex down, go down, you'll see that flaring coming on. Interesting. And that causes problems because yeah. as you said, you have to tighten up so much. You really have to focus on when you're doing your deadlift here mm. for your leg not to start to rotate here. That's right. So, um, so I'll show the exercise how you, you can get that one firing. To the stuff I love, homework. The other thing uh, I'll do is I'll do the adjustment here on uh, your sacred neck joint on uh, the left side mm -hmm. so you can get that one to work great do the neck as well yeah, as a chiropractor like mm. former chiropractor current chiropractor mm. going on into more uh becoming a doctor mm. what do you think is the value in a chiropractor because i think a lot of them oversell themselves in my mm. opinion mm. i believe it's value but I, i'm trying to understand because clearly there's some work that they do that mm helps but Romark and I have this theory that you know chiropractors give adjustments to people mm. but then if the muscles aren't in balance if some are not strong enough or some are not loose enough mm. you're gonna go right back into the position you know the imbalanced positioning that you were in before anyways that's absolutely right it's it's as a you know Nietzsche philosopher he said if you only have a hammer everything you're gonna see is nails yeah. and and that's what happens as well for I see that with you're gonna see some physios. They're gonna focus a lot on your muscle testing. Hmm. They're gonna uh, have a lot of focus on them, on the muscle exercises. Yeah. They'll have some chiropractors. They'll focus a lot on the spine adjustments, mm -hmm. saying that everything is spine related. Then you'll have some of the orthopedic surgeons or rheumatologists. They'll focus on rheumatologists, especially. They'll focus on you having tendonitis or something. They're gonna give you cortisol. Yes. And then the chiropractors, uh, the orthopedic surgeons gonna mm -hmm. focus is there anything we can do surgery on that's right because that's what you do that's your speciality you know yeah. you're always gonna work out from your mindset yeah from from my point of view I like to have a big toolbox I like to have I like to do a proper muscle assessment I like to do the stability assessment mm -hmm. you need to do um, the imaging diagnostics see do we need to do an ultrasound dynamic ultrasound, go down, test the muscles, have the ultrasound head on while we're testing the muscles, yeah. see if there's anything going on right there. Do an x-ray if that's necessary, do an MRI if that's necessary. And then you take all your findings and then you come out, you say, all right, okay. this is what we look at. You know, mm -hmm. this is our assessment and this is what we found out. Because if you go out and then you see your chiropractor first, he'll tell you one thing. You see the physio, he's gonna tell you another thing. You'll see the orthopedic surgeon, he's gonna tell you a third thing. 
you come out very confused. Yeah. You're like, yeah. that's my journey right now. <laughs> You're like, what what's going on here? You need someone uh, to sort of look at the big picture here yeah. uh, and and give you that. Man, I wish you were now like. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're legit jack of all trades, in a good way. Yeah, but the I did, I I did sports uh, medicine as well. I have a diploma in sports medicine, so I I did a lot of things. But but my main thing is, is spine related. Uh, but I like the sports medicine. I work mm. with power athletes. I work with, with you yeah. guys, you, with, with the strongman. Uh, I worked with Eddie Hall for, for a long time, for many years really? now. Yeah. Holy shit. And, um, and I like the power sports, I like MMA yeah. and all that. So, so that's sort of my area. And, yeah. and even though I do 90% of the time, that's something that's very spine related, hospital related. You know, I love to come out and I, I see you guys, you know, I yeah. see because you spend so much time, you know, developing yourself, really improving. And sometimes you can go in and you can help with just a small bit like this here. Of course, yeah. If, if that can help just get you a 5% advantage of making sure that you don't get injured during the next heavy deadlift or whatever it is, you know, that, that that's what I like. I like to help people. I like help people improve themselves. What it really is, how often should someone see a chiropractor? What for? Okay. Kind of Do you believe in like the, the like the hammer and nails shit or do you? Yeah, I believe that the, that all things has a value, but you have to be careful that you don't oversell it. It's it's like you you can't treat everything with with one kind of treatment. It just doesn't work like that. Mm. So so for the manipulation treatment, if you go in, you do an adjustment. That's definitely good if you have an issue. If there's a misalignment, if something's not moving right, that's a good thing to go and you do that. It's not something I would do uh, seven times a week for for several weeks. It's something that you do and then you go in, you can assess it again. All right, this is better. If not, all right, you can do the treatment again. If you keep doing the treatment and it doesn't work, you need to, you know, you have to just take a small break. You have to think about, okay, is that actually the problem? Uh, you know, are we not seeing the big picture here? Do we have to change something with the treatment? And that goes as well with with the as a as an athlete as you are working your muscles that strenuously, doing that much work with your body. It's good to go in. You have some muscle energy techniques with a hammer, or with massage, or with fascial release, or a dynamic stretching, whatever it is. It's good. It's definitely good, especially if there's some kind of issue. And it's good as a rehab thing as well, or prehab. But uh, it's not a. It it can't work alone. It's not something you can have as just one remedy, and that's gonna take off care of all your issues. That is, mm. I don't believe in that. Mm. I believe that you know you need to combine the things. Uh, and this is what we're doing in this video. So, mm. so my question really is: because mm. chiropractors typically just crack joints, mm. right, to get yeah. the pop. Yeah. That's the gist of it. Mm. Is that is that right? Yeah. So cracking a joint, as far as I understand, is just releasing gases mm. from synovial fluid. Mm. So it's true. When you when do you, you do, do anything, like, when you do the adjustments, yeah, you're gonna create a vacuum inside that joint, mm -hmm. and that's gonna release a, a small burst of nitrogen uh, air from from inside the actual vacuum here that you create, oh. and it will give you some. It'll give you a release. Uh, meaning that it will make the muscles relax here, it will mm. reduce the pain, and will create some more movement within that joint. Um, and, and, and that can be good if you have an issue with that joint. Mm. But if you don't have an issue, if it's not locked up, if it's moving properly and it's fine, there's absolutely no point in going out doing that. Then you relax your shoulder here. And you take a deep breath in. And let it out. Yes, very good. I do one more here. Um, deep breath. And relax here. Ah, oh, good. And relax here. There you go. Very good. Mm -hmm. Relax a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I just cracked it, so we'll see if. We'll see if anything. You relax here. Mm -hmm. 
I'll bring that down here. Yeah, a little bit more backwards here. That's it. Oh, yeah. Very good. Oh, very good. That's one neck exercise I want to show you. And there's a difference between nerve flossing and tensing, right? Terminology, you know, not consistent. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing. There's different physical therapists call flossing, some call it tensioning, and oh. I thought there, in some say it's the same thing. Then when you look at the MRI descriptions, I've been yeah. looking at a lot of uh, MRI descriptions here during my PhD. What you're doing feels great, by the way. It's really good stuff. And, and there's a big issue with people using just the, the wording. If you go in, as we talked about before, getting the right information when you see a doctor, yeah, you'll have one guy describing your MRI. He's going to say you have a big disc protrusion. The other guy's going to say you have a discus prolapse. The other guy's going to say, oh, you have some bulging of the disc. Mm. You're going to have some tension on the nerve. You're going to have some stenosis. And um, these are words with the actual meaning. But if you don't use them correctly, it's mm. going to be extremely confusing, uh, confusing mm. for, for you <laughs> and very difficult to sort of interpret what's actually going on. Fascinating. Uh, I'll show you the neck exercises now. Yes, please. Because these ones here, I think you can have a lot of benefit from that in the future, giving you that strength and stability, especially because you do so much overhead Great. pressing yeah. and also because you do a lot of the pull-ups, right? Yes. <coughs> with the pull-ups especially when you go full range as you do yeah you'll see a lot of people they start to tighten up when they go all the way out here when they stretch all the way out they'll tighten up their neck here mm. and if there's an issue or if it's not strong enough then it starts to become a problem uh, yeah. so through here uh, to neutral Good. And then you can try to see if you can sort of pinch the chin down. So yeah, that's it. So you're squeezing it down there. And you can feel here on the SCMs, you can feel that. Oh yeah. They start to, you know, you build up some acid quite fast. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Uh -huh. This is one of the best exercises for, uh, you know, the boxers. When they want to get a strong neck, if they don't want to get, yeah, get knocked out. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what they do. They get a really into race drivers as well um, to avoid, you know, getting that whiplash That's awesome. injury. That felt so good. <laughs> this is the stuff I love the most. This is why I, um, I get sad with like massage therapists. They usually, you know, just don't worry about the exercises, just the massage is enough. That's the stuff that drives me nuts. I want to know what to do on my own to correct my body. All right, so got a great uh, work done here with Dr. Peter what he said. Um, <laughs> awesome stuff. He, he showed me some stretches, some movements, uh, some activations to do. That is like along the lines of my favorite kind of uh, rehab work because then I could do it on my own and consistently. Um, awesome stuff. So thank you so much. If you guys are ever in Denmark, please see this guy. Epic work.